Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. I've got a ton of things to cover, along with some really big stories, so I thought I'd do a talking head video. Anyway, today, NVIDIA's RTX 3090 outsold the entire 6000 series, reviews have dropped for AMD's newest desktop APUs, the RTX 7000 cards detailed, an old GPU maker is back? Maybe, we'll get to that in a second, and AMD just announced a new monster dual GPU. But before I get to that, I have a really good deal. As you can see right here, Newegg is currently selling the Ryzen 5 5600X, that's their newest Ryzen CPU, for not $289, but $269 with this code right here, so you get an extra $20 off, which, if we look at the 3600 non-X model, we can see that it's only $10 less. And remember that this is the non-X model versus the newest generation's X variant. So like I said, really good deal there. If you're interested, make sure to check that out in the description below. It's an affiliate link, it won't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. Anyway. Moving on to our first story, we can see right here that, according to Tom's Hardware, NVIDIA's RTX 3090 looks to have sold more units than AMD's entire RX 6000 series lineup. And keep in mind that the 3090 is NVIDIA's worst selling GPU, and of course, the 3090 is extremely expensive, so it is pretty surprising, but I think it's really telling because it actually kind of shows us why almost no one's been able to buy 6,000 cards. As you can see right here, they actually got this information from the Steam survey where it shows that the RTX 3090, and of course, really quickly, I do want to point out, yes, the Steam survey is not an you know, 100% accurate or anything like that. It just surveys gamers from them, certain ones. So, it isn't going to be 100% accurate, but it at least gives us an idea of the market. Anyway, as you can see, the 3090 has 0.37, but when we go down, not a single 6,000 card is here. And the reason is because they don't show anything below 0.15% market share. Luckily, this Redditor actually found a way around that. And when we go right here, we can actually see that this right here is using DirectX 12 systems, and it's fairly similar across the board anyway, but the 3090 is at 0.35%, and this is July, and then whenever we look at the 6800 XT, 0.10%, then the, let's look, the 6800 non-XT, 0.05%, and these numbers are mirrored over here we can see 6800 xt 0.10 0.05 0.08 for the 69 so literally all of the rx 6000 cards combined haven't sold as much as the 3090 at least according to this and next up for today it looks like the reviews have dropped for AMD's newest 5000G APUs. That is, their DIY APUs, just because manufacturers have already released the part in pre-built systems. So, the DIY APUs are the ones that haven't released just yet. Anyway, I really think Tom's Hardware's review is pretty much the best here, and as they say it, it has the fastest integrated graphics ever. And I really think this is the most important part just because we pretty well know what the 5000 CPUs are capable of doing. And the one thing that really makes us different is the integrated GPU. And when we look right here, we can see that Tom's Hardware did an average FPS at 1080p with the iGPUs and they were not kidding. It completely crushes everything. We can see right here that the 5700G with Precision Boost Overdrive and DDR4 at 4000 gets a whopping 52 FPS on average, which like I said, this is an iGPU, so not bad at all. For reference, when compared to Intel's CPUs, it absolutely crushes them. And remember that Intel's newest 11th gen desktop CPUs include their XE architecture. Now, it has been backported to 14 nanometers, but it is technically Intel's newest GPU architecture. And as you can see, it gets completely crushed. Not only that, but it even crushes an 11,400 with a discrete GT1030. So definitely really impressive there, although I will say that if we look here, we can see that the 5700G, the HP 
one, so this is one that comes with the pre-built system, did significantly worse than the DIY model. And the reason for that, I do believe, is just because it has slower memory and worse timings. Remember that the interconnect between the CPU and iGPU and AMD's APUs is directly correlated to memory speed. So the faster the memory speed, the faster the chip is in general. And when we go down here, we can actually see that they put it in single channel mode and it completely crushed the performance. Basically, you absolutely want to use dual channel memory and really fast memory if you're going to get any of these APUs. And next up for today, we have a really interesting story from video cards. And it's basically where the Twitter user Ulrak effectively took all the information that we have on Navi GPUs and as I will really quickly state, as video card says, the 3X specs have been repeated by multiple sources so we can potentially assume that these rumors are more or less accurate at this point. So when we look, we can see right here Navi 31 and this is going to be the main GPU, we're talking the 7900 XT, 7800 XT, comes with two dies and six shader engines. Then when we move down to Navi 32, so we're talking say the 7700 XT, it still uses two dies, so we're talking an MCM design multi-chip module, but it takes out two of the shader engines, so it only has two each for a total of four. Then when we move down to Navi 33, we're finally getting back to your typical monolithic die. So, like I said, that was just really interesting to see. I thought I would show you, but moving on is a really, really big story. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say it just like Tech Power Up did. Seemingly fake Twitter account, but the reason I'm going over this is because a ton of news outlets have already reported it, and I thought I would kind of go over why it may be true, why it may not, and just kind of let you decide ultimately, just because it is interesting. Oh, and we should find out tomorrow, so if come to find out it is fake, I'm sure I'll pin a comment or something like that on this video, so make sure to check that out. Anyway, what we're hearing is that 3DFX, which if you've never really heard of them, they're an older GPU maker that actually competed with AMD and Nvidia. And believe it or not, it made some really great cards called their Voodoo line. So this right here is an example of the Voodoo 2, and they really did have some great tech back then. Unfortunately, through some issues that they were having, they ultimately dissolved pretty much all of their assets and sold it off to Nvidia but I'll get to that in just a second. First, the story is right here. Some kind of Twitter account became active, called itself 3DXF official, and then posted this. August 5th, 3DFX. Basically saying something is coming August 5th, which once again is tomorrow, so we will find out. But once again, I just thought this was interesting, but this isn't it, and this is really why I'm posting this, because I saw this back when they first did it, August 1st, or I think I may have seen it August 2nd, but anyway, I saw it. But then, today, they've done some kind of new statement, and once again, Probably not true, but they basically released this and they stated that Janssen Products is proud to announce that 3DFX is returning after 20 years. Janssen Products, a new investment company in San Francisco, acquired the assets of 3DFX Interactive on July 23rd and is currently in the process of trademarking the 3DFX name. They also say that 3DFX is scheduled to return this winter with new graphics cards and will expand into other products related to smartphones, smart TVs, and sound systems. So, there's a few things here. For one, they called it Janssen products, which really sounds like Jensen, uh, which is the CEO of NVIDIA. So this definitely does sort of sound like a hoax, but I guess it's just one of those things where it would be really exciting if true, almost definitely not. As you can see, well, really quickly, you can see back in 2000, 3DFX dissolved and they sold all of their assets to NVIDIA. If we do a trademark search, we can see that 3DFX has either expired or canceled. Now, you could argue that maybe that lends some credence to the idea that NVIDIA doesn't own it. No one owns it. And they even did say right over here that they acquired it and are in the process of trademarking the 3DFX name. But the question is, why would you make this announcement before you actually trademark the name? 
Basically, it really does seem dubious, but because a lot of people were discussing it and it is kind of exciting to think about, I thought I'd at least quickly mention it. With that said, lastly for today, we have something that is absolutely official, and it is an announcement from AMD, where they actually just announced a new dual GPU. Let's go down here. Technically, they announced three new GPUs, the W6900X, 6800X, and here's the interesting part, 6800X Duo. Now, I will go ahead and say that this is not an MCM GPU. It is still based on RDNA 2, so this is technically, and I'll show you right here, two GPUs just kind of put into one GPU. Also, it's really weird because it looks like two cards effectively slap right next to each other with PCI Express down here. There's some kind of new PCI Express system with it. Very odd, but the downside and the reason why they can do this is because it, it is unfortunately only made for the new Apple Mac Pro, but like I said, it's still pretty interesting. Obviously, AMD has made dual GPUs for quite a long time now, but I really think this is at least somewhat a precursor to their next gen cards that are effectively going to have dual GPUs that look like one. But anyway, we can see right here the uh, Radeon Pro W6800X, which more or less looks like a 6800. But then we have the Duo, which comes with double the compute units of the 6800X, obviously, because it has two of those GPUs. Still, that is massive. We're talking 120 compute units, which is 40 more compute units than, say, the 6900X. So, very interesting there. A total of 7,680 cores. Still the same 256-bit bus, but of course, there's one per GPU. Up to 30.2 teraflops of FP32. Double the infinity cache, of course, because there's two. 400 watt TDP, which that is definitely pretty wild, and double the GDDR6 memory. So it does have 64 gigabytes total. And what's really interesting here is that it is combined using AMD's Infinity Fabric. Remember that the Infinity Fabric is what AMD uses to combine their chiplets to make a single GPU. And this would be used if they do end up releasing an MCM GPU, this would be used to combine those as well. You can see here it provides a high bandwidth, low latency, direct connection between the local AMD GPUs, enabling high-speed GPU-to-GPU communications designed to satisfy today's creative workloads. So yeah, once again, not an MCM design, but really interesting nonetheless. So while that does it for today, yes, I know I always kind of ramble a lot with these videos, but I do hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe. And my question to you is, are you excited for these rumored MCM GPUs? And also, is that post for 3 dfx true? Are we really going to hear something tomorrow? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.